So we're going to now solve equations, but we're going to look at a more algebraic way of solving equations. It doesn't mean that balancing scales is wrong. It just means that um, it's a more efficient way of, uh, of writing our equations and their solutions. And we really don't want to have to draw scales every time that we are solving equations. So I want you to look at the picture that we've got here. What we're going to do is on the left hand side of each page, we're going to look at the balancing scales that we did before. And on the right hand side, we're going to look at the algebraic way of writing down our solutions. It's really important that the working is shown very clearly and that you follow the method that I show you. We're going to work down the page. We're going to show exactly what we're doing to get from one step to the next. And as equations become more complicated, it's very easy to make mistakes if you don't follow this, uh, this method. And you'll be doing equations all the way up through the school. So it's important that you get this method correct from the word go. We're going to look at five equations. We're going to uh, look at balancing the scales. We're going to look at how we solve them algebraically. So this is the first example. I want you to look at the left hand side of the page and to think about the equation that your scales are representing. So as we work through these examples, I don't want you to make any notes. I just want you to listen to what I say and make sure that you understand the methods involved. At the end of the video, I'll give you some examples that you can write into your exercise books along with some nice clear notes. So on the left hand side of our first set of scales, we have a circle which is represented by X and a block which is worth seven. And on the right hand side, we have a single block that is 19. So in algebra, the equation that we have is x plus 7 on the left hand side and 19 on the right hand side. Now, our aim is always to get a single x. We want to know what it is on the right hand side that that x is worth. So, how are we going to do this? Well, according to the balancing of scales, we're going to take away this block worth seven. But we know that in order to keep our scales in balance, we have to do the same to the right hand side. So we're not going to have 19 anymore. We're going to have to uh, reduce that by the same amount of seven. So in algebra, we're going to take away seven from both sides of our equation. If you prefer, you could write this in a circle so that it makes it very clear what is your operation and what is your equation. On the left hand side we are left with x and you can see that from the scales. And on the right hand side if we take away 7, we've done it to the left hand side, we need to do it to the right hand side and taking away 7 from 19 leaves us with 12. This is our solution to our equation. Now, every time we get a solution, it is possible to go back to our original equation and just check whether or not our solution works. So if we think that the answer is 12, we should be able to go back to the beginning and say when x equals 12, then x plus 7 is equal to 12 plus 7 which is 19, and so we have the correct answer. Now let's look at the operations that we're doing. On the left hand side here, 7 is being added to x, and the inverse operation, what we call the inverse, it's the opposite of adding on, is to subtract. So because 7 is added, to x, then here we subtract that 7. And we do it to both sides of our equation. Let's look at another example. So this time on the left hand side we don't have a full circle. We have part of a circle. 
and part of that circle is worth x minus 3. We have a section here which has been taken out and so we need to put that back in again. You can see that what we're going to have to do is to put back in that 3. So our aim again is to go down to the left hand side and end up with x on one side of our equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, section which is worth 3 and I'm going to add one of those sections across to the left hand side. And what it does is it then makes a full circle. So the left hand side is now a full circle. But what I have done is I have added 3 to the left hand side. So I have to do exactly the same to the right hand side. So I'm also going to take another of these small sections and add it on to the right hand side as well. So you can see visually here exactly what we have done. We have taken this missing section in here and we have filled it in to make the full circle that is x. And in order to do that, we have added that 3 back in again. It was taken away from 3 here. That section was knocked off. And on the right hand side, this section here, which is also 3, was also added on. So that we had the same amount added to both sides. And what we want to know is what is the value of the block on the right, which will be equal to x. So our equation that we started with was x minus 3 equals 8. And we added on 3 to both sides. And that left the left hand side as x and 8 plus 3 is 11. And so that is our solution and our missing section on the right hand side of our balancing scales is 11. Again, we can check our uh, solution. If we add, take x is 11, take away 3, then we get 8. So that works. Again, let's look at our operations. Here, we had that 3 is subtracted from x. And so the opposite to subtract is to add. And so we added on the 3. And again, we did that to both sides. In the next example, we have a balance in scales. And I'd like you just to stop the video, pause the video, and think about what you think the equation is going to be that we are going to write down in algebra. So you can see very clearly that we have five identical circles, each worth x. So on the left hand side, we have 5x. And on the right hand side, we have five identical blocks that are each worth 20. And so on the right hand side, we have 100. Our scales are in perfect balance. And so one side must equal the other. Now, again, in order to get to a single x, we're now going to divide by 5. We want to go from having 5 identical circles, each worth x, to having only 1. And so on the right hand side, we are also going to divide by 5 and just have one of our blocks, which we can see quite clearly is going to be worth 20. So we're going to divide both sides of our equation by 5, and that gives us the x equals 20. And that is our solution to our equation. In this example, we don't have a full circle on the left hand side. We only have half of a circle or a semicircle. So our equation on the left hand side is x over 2 or x divided by 2. 
and the right hand side is 4, we can see that our scales are in balance, so the left and the right hand side must be the same. Now, the question is, what do we have to do in order to make the left hand side into a full X? And if I put in a line across here, you can see that in order to make uh, a full X, we have to multiply by 2. We take two of those semicircles and put them together in order to make the full circle. So on the right hand side, we must do exactly the same. And we have two blocks that are each still worth 4. Algebraically, we're going to multiply by 2, both sides. And the left hand side becomes x, and the right hand side becomes 8. Again, we can check our solution. If we take that x is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and so that works. We've taken the opposite operation. Here, x is divided by 2, and the opposite operation, 2 to divide, is to multiply by 2. And again, we do that to both sides of our equation. The previous example, let's just go back to that because I didn't uh, consider this, but we will look at this. Here we had that x is multiplied by 5. And the opposite operation to multiply by 5, 5 is to divide by 5. So with this example, we're going to have to do two operations in order to solve our equation. On the left hand side, you can see very clearly that we have four x's and we have 6, so 4x plus 6 equals 38. In order to get to just having our x's on their own, we're going to take away the 6, but we need to take away 6 to both sides of our equation. So the left-hand side becomes 4x, and 38 take away 6 is 32. Then, in order to go down from 4x's to a single x, we are going to divide by 4. Do that to both sides. 4x divided by 4 is x, and 32 divided by 4 is 8, and that is our solution. Again, we can substitute that in. If we have that x equals 8, then 4x's are 32. Add on 6 is 38. And so it works. So what I'd like you to do now is to uh, write the title in your exercise books, Solving Equations. And I'd like you to do each of these six examples in your books. You need to set them out as I did. You need to show your inverse operation. So you need to show the opposite of what you're going to, what has happened to x, so that you can get back to having a single x. And if you can, check your solution to check that it works in your equation. So here we have the answers to the questions. You can um, pause the video and check your answers off. Um, just making notes of the opposite operations each time that if you know here, for example, in the first one that we have got 4 times x, so x has been multiplied by 4, so the operation that we need to do, the inverse operation, is to divide by 4. So we've looked at lots of examples. We've looked at um, clearly doing algebraic examples and how they match the uh, balancing of equations. You now need to copy these notes into your book and they should be nice and clear and set out.